my favorite site changed lately because we were able to get access to a non-open site to the public yet. And that's the new excavated pilgrimage road at the city of wow. David. It's not from David's time, but it's ex exactly dated to the year around 30 yeah, uh, AD. So that means the years of Yeshua. And we know from Roman historical sources that Pontius Pilate um, kind of rebuilt Jerusalem. He built new streets, new infrastructure. So it's dated to Pontius Pilate's time. So exactly Yeshua's time. And it's the street connecting the pool of Siloam uh, to the temple, um, um, actually today to the Western Wall. So that's the pilgrimage road number one, where all the pilgrims came up after purifying themselves, kind of baptizing in the uh, Siloam pool and then coming up to serve in the right, temple. Because you had to go into and, the temple in a state of ritual purity. So you, just so people that know, so you had to be, you had to dip and take a mikvah, you had to dip in the water to become ritually pure before you could go up into the house of God, right? And probably as well, the, this Siloa pool was the largest, uh, twice the size of an Olympic pool, it was the largest pool in Jerusalem, and probably the place as well where the 3,000 got baptized and where the birth of the church uh, uh, happened. Wow. Um, but what I want to say, uh, as well, why it's so um, special for me and why it became my favorite site is because at the Feast of Passover, uh, we can specially connect with Yeshua because he has, as you said, he has been in Jerusalem at the Feast of Passover, uh, not Passover, sorry, the uh, Feast of Tabernacles. And, um, and he comes to Jerusalem and, you know, he says, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scriptures has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. So he speaks about the spiritual water. And it's interesting that it's on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. So what happens on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles? Um, the, the Jews and the priests, especially the priests, had a ceremony taking water from the Pool of Siloam up to the Temple Mount. And that's when the prayers for rain started. So it's a special ceremony, and during the ceremony, the Jews were reciting Isaiah 12, 3. So with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Pool of Siloam. Siloam means... Uh, uh, sent one. The one, the one who is Shalom. sent, yeah, the, the, the one who is saving us, uh, uh, the Messiah. So it's, uh, it's when everybody was reciting this, he was saying this, a sentence that it's, you know, it's not about the physical water, the rain, it's about the spiritual water that we need and Yeshua that we need. So um, understanding the Feast of Tabernacles, understanding the Jewish uh, customs, um, will understand, uh, give us a better understanding of Yeshua. And that's why I love this site, because it's so easy to really, uh, um, you know, show this connection. Yeah, it's, it's awesome because... You know, and we have a little thing that we wrote, or we put out a weekly guide to the Torah portions, and we talk about Sukkot this week. And one of the things I mentioned is that, you know, there's this tradition, according to the rabbis, that when the children of Israel were in the wilderness and God gave them water in the wilderness, that there was literally this rock that followed them in the wilderness, and they would uh, cry out to God before this rock, and God would cause water to come forth from this rock and that's actually confirmed by Paul in the New Testament, where he says they all ate the same spiritual food, they all drank from the same spiritual rock, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and that rock was Messiah. And so it's amazing that, you know, there is this connection between Sukkot and the water from the rock and the rock and him getting up and saying, I'm the living water. I mean, what chutzpah? He's like, listen, the water that you drank in the wilderness, the water that you've been praying for, like you said, I'm offering it to you. 